Hey everybody, Chris Grow Fishing here. Gonna give you a little recap of the last event here. This was uh, the third stop. Uh, we were in Counts, Tennessee at Pickwick um, for the uh, Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit. Uh, finished 59th, uh, you probably saw from my post, you guys that follow, um, I did a couple little, uh, I did a day one recap and stuff for the YouTubers. I lost some fish. Uh, we can address that later in this, but uh, should have been a better finish, but it could have been worse. So we're going to take the positives. I had the bites. I'm just going to give you a little synopsis how we did this. We had an awesome week. Wish I would have continued and fished a little more, bit more, but uh, basically kind of rock and rolled, stayed mid lake um, for half the time. And then I would go up river <laughs> and uh, flip some grass, flip some cypress trees and stuff. There's some bigger bites going on up there. What I did was basically my one, two punch, mainly on day one and I'll, and I'll mix in day two, was uh, I flipped two things. Uh, first off, this is a Fantasita 7.3 medium heavy with an STX, high speed, 20 pound, 100% fluorocarbon Berkeley. Uh, I flipped two baits basically on this rig. I had two rods set up. This was a good old pit boss in Skywalker. Four rod super line fusion hook um, with flat out tungsten, 5 16 ounce weight pegged. And I would flip the Skywalker. And then uh, a couple of you guys, uh, I, I kind of said it there in that day one recap. I flipped a good old Chigger Craw. And uh, what I did in this is uh, I flipped this in Max Scent. Uh, which is uh, a must have nowadays out there. Uh, in practice, no big deal. I just flipped a regular chigger crawl, but I feel like max scent on game day is just a smart way to go about. But did that did a lot of my damage. Basically day one, that's all I caught him on. No, sorry, I am such a liar and, I, and fighter will kill me. I cracked one rider on the fighter jig that is the five ace in his sapphire black blue. And then uh, this is the new boss grub, four inch trimmed it down, really makes a compact trailer. Flip this on a 7.3 heavy Fantasita with a 7.3 to one premier braid to floral, 20 pound floral leader. Uh, I have to give it credit because I caught a lot of fish on it, but only one fish that I brought to the scales. So sorry about that Seth. Uh, so that was basically day one. I kind of got into, uh, I had an area that was awesome. I had set up, I, I think I had them in there spawning in the dirty water. And basically it's what we do here at home, here on the chain. So I kind of pinpointed these fish and uh, had a quick 14 pounds uh, and went out throughout the day, like upgrading an ounce here, a quarter pound here, nothing good. Uh, actually probably burned some fish that I probably could have used on day two. Uh, so now on to day two, I started up the river and basically what I did there was, uh, I'm flipping a tube, but that's a tube that, uh, you ain't going to see anymore. This is a Berkeley Havoc. Uh, I have a handful of them left. Uh, this is a smash tube, uh, but it's just a big oversized tube. There's other companies that make them. Berkeley actually makes a power tube that same size. Uh, I flipped this on a 5 aught Superline EWG Fusion Berkeley hook with a half ounce pegged flat out tungsten. Setup is a 7.6 heavy fast. Um, I th flip it on a lefty MGX, just a light combo, all around good punching combo, lightweight punching combo, I should say, flipping combo. But the key was, oh my goodness, I can't stop talking about it. Durabraid, you know, Bobby Lane, the uh, Red Crest champion, don't wrap his boat in this for nothing. Uh, gosh, look at that. Flipped that all week long, did not lose its color. Uh, I threw a frog 100 million times, never got one bite. That didn't lose its color. So I'm really impressed with this, guys. I really, really think this is going to replace the old PP, the old Power Pro in the world. But what I did with this when I got up river is I flipped this around the cypress trees, but mostly the tube was in the grass that was a little flooded when the water was high. Only caught maybe three, four fish on this, but I caught a uh, really nice one on this that helped. Uh, then ran back into that spawning ground, caught a couple fish on the old uh, 
pit boss. And like I said, you know day two didn't go well. I didn't have a limit. I decided to do some freestyling. I ran into an afternoon shad spawn and I thought I could get right with the spinner bait and actually caught a nice one for number four, but I ended up losing three fish on this um, just because I'm an idiot. I lost one in the morning on it during a shad spawn, a uh, five pounder. And then in the afternoon, I think you saw on Instagram that one was a dandy, lost that one, and then I lost another four pounder on it, which is gonna sting. You can't lose against these guys. These guys are too, too good. But this here is a Bassman spinnerbait, dirty shad, half ounce, little swimmer trailer on it. My go-to, I don't think I've lost a bass on this thing since Nam, and here you go, it happens when uh, the money's on the line. But uh, any questions, as always, hit me up, you know. Um, feel free to answer anything in depth of how it really, you know, some other things that went down, what I, patterns that it started throughout the day. I never really seen an afternoon shad spawn like that. That was pretty cool. Um, too bad I found it with a half hour to go. Wish I had some more time. But coulda, shoulda, woulda. Really appreciate you guys subscribing, following, and, you know, following me on this journey on the MLF Tech Warehouse Circuit. We're going to get it right one of these days in one of these. Stay tuned, guys. Take care.